So somebody asked me uh, today at lunch, what's the difference between uh, hemoglobin A1C and uh, fasting blood glucose? And why would you get an insulin survey and, and instead of an oral glucose tolerance test? Uh, we'll talk about all that in just a minute, uh, but first an introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. Um, <clears throat> and with PrevMed, uh, we uh, help you understand what's going on with your body so you can prevent diabetes and therefore um, uh, the components of aging, heart attack, stroke, uh, dementia, the things that really cause disability. Now first, what were the original tests for uh, blood glucose? It was just a blood glucose test. Now this is a, um, <clears throat> these are not totally normal blood sugar ranges. These are blood sugar ranges. The green one is normal. Um, <clears throat> but these are the ranges of blood sugar that you'll tend to see with normal, uh, with a pre-diabetic and diabetic. And normal blood sugar will, if you've been fasting, will be around the 80s. Uh, if you take a what's called a glucose challenge or a meal, it can go up to like 120. Uh, but then your um, your body recognizes that one of the nuclei in your brain says the blood sugar is going high. It causes the body to release insulin, and then insulin makes the uh, hits the receptors mostly in the liver and muscle cells, and then those receptors. Uh, cause them those cells, the muscle and liver cells to pull glucose out of the bloodstream and into the cell, therefore dropping the blood glucose. Now, if you have um, mild diabetes or insulin resistance, you can get a fasting glucose of 100 and uh, the uh, one and two hour uh, blood glucose numbers can be, again, higher than normal. Usually you get back to normal. Um, you just your body has to make more insulin to get there. This is a, a much somebody with much uh, worse diabetes, and again, it can go up and over significantly over 200, and actually never come back down to a normal level below 100. So, if you go back to when we originally developed the testing for these. Uh, originally, we didn't understand diabetes, and we didn't we diagnosed it before we had good tests. One of the original tests actually was even drinking the urine of someone who was um, drinking a lot but still losing weight. In other words, they had the original uh, full blown diabetes. Uh, diabetes mellitus actually stands diabetes stands for drinking a lot, thirsty all the time. Um, <clears throat> So we got better than having to test the urine uh, to find out if it was sweet. We started testing the blood. And then we realized that you can get this variation in the blood. So we realized, okay, you, could, you should do it when they're fasting. That fasting gives you a little bit better number, but it can vary significantly as well. So what we realized we could do is take it when people are fasting and then give them a glucose challenge. That's the OGTT, oral glucose tolerance test. That then will show a pattern based on your ability to metabolize glucose. Um, and we'll, talk, we'll show another uh, slide in a few minutes which helps us understand this even a little bit better. That's called the insulin survey. But uh, this gives you some of the basics of two of the, uh, well, three of the original tests. One, tasting urine. Then the second one, which obviously we don't do the first one anymore. Uh, the second one was um, a glucose, just a glucose test. We don't really do that anymore either. The next one was a fasting glucose test and then the oral glucose tolerance test. Now, why did we need anything more than that? Well, there's a couple reasons. Uh, the biggest reason, and the first reason was, this is a headache. Somebody's got to fast. They've got to come in. They've got to get blood drawn. They've got to drink 75 grams of that gooey, sweet, uh, syrupy stuff. And then they've got to stay for another hour and get another glucose test. And then they have to stay for another hour. So that's two hours in the lab. The tests are not expensive. Those You can get them for 20 to 40 bucks for an oral glucose tolerance test, which is far better 
than the fasting uh, blood glucose. But have you noticed that I've missed, I haven't mentioned yet hemoglobin A1C. Why did we do hemoglobin A1C? Well, it was discovered that uh, glucose will bind to uh, proteins in the body. That's actually how it causes inflammation, uh, one of the major causes for it. We think insulin is an even bigger cause, insulin itself. Now, you can actu actually, some proteins shed that uh, glucose maybe a little bit faster, uh, but anyhow, you know, we know that it takes uh, weeks and months for glucose that has been bound to hemoglobin to come off of that hemoglobin molecule. So guess what? <clears throat> uh, we also, we know that number and we also know the, the bigger number and that is how often we recycle hemoglobin. So given that information, you could measure the percentage of glucose bound to a hemoglobin molecule and that can give you an estimate of the curves for the past six weeks. Oops, I got that upside down. So somebody who's doing this every day is going to have a much higher hemoglobin uh, A1C. By the way, HbA1C means hemoglobin A1C. It's glycated hemoglobin or hemoglobin that has been, that has a glucose bound to it. Uh, I took this because of the overall title, 50 Shades of Diabetes. Um, I don't mean anything uh, r r romantic here. I'm talking about, um, I, I found this on the internet, and basically what they're talking about is a very important point. We used to think people didn't have any problem until they were wasting away and drinking too much fluids because of high high glucose. We have continued to lower 50 shades of diabetes to where now <clears throat> uh, it's clear, for example, with hemoglobin A1C, the numbers uh, up in the mid fives are causing significant cardiovascular inflammation. Now, as you see on this um, Uh, chart, they're saying mid fives are okay. The reality is they're not. And I'll routinely get patients come in from docs who haven't studied this very well, who think that um, the standard in medicine right now is to not worry about it until you get up to six. Uh, again, hemoglobin A1Cs reflect levels of glucose that routinely will cause significant cardiovascular inflammation. <laughs> So that gives us, the, to run through the tests real quick, <clears throat> again, you had the first two that we don't use anymore, tasting the urine or just checking a spot urine in the lab. Um, then we went to fasting blood glucose, and then we went to um, an oral glucose tolerance test, and then we went to because, uh, hemoglobin A1C because it was so simple. The patient didn't have to go through... Um, NPO, nothing by mouth, um, or waiting in the lab for two hours. <clears throat> Since we've discovered that ins insulin resistance is so important, um, we've begun to look at a thing called an insulin um, survey. That was actually developed by a doctor named Joseph Kraft. He was a, uh, he was a pathologist who ran a lab in Chicago um, decades ago. What he did was slightly different. Instead of just measuring, the biggest difference was this. Instead of measuring glucose, they measure glucose and insulin level. And you'll see as we look through these patterns why he did it. Um, so <clears throat> the second difference between um, an insulin survey and a, an OGTT is that we use 100 grams rather than 75 grams. And the third difference is that we look for longer periods, usually three or four hours, as opposed to just two hours. So let's go through the patterns here. This is a, quote, normal pattern. The insulin starts at zero. You take the uh, 800 grams of, of glucose or fructose, and then you get up to about 50, uh, 50 or 60 in your insulin level, and then it comes back down. 
um, the glucose levels will go up to like one, well, they'll start at 80 or 90 and then go up to 120 or so and then come back down. Now, the, ne the second pattern is you've got insulin resistance. It takes more insulin. Your, ins your uh, blood sugar doesn't drop as quickly because your receptors are not receiving the insulin and pulling uh, glucose into the bloodstream, uh, out of the bloodstream and into the cell. So you have to pump out more insulin. It also takes longer to get uh, that uh, glucose out of the blood and into the cell. This third pattern is not that much difference in terms of um, levels that you get to. It does go a little bit higher. Instead of uh, like one, 105, 110, it goes up to over 120. But here's the big difference between this, the, these two patterns. It just takes longer. You've, you've gotten out of what we call an immediate storage insulin dump and getting into making new insulin to get over this hump, this uh, stressor of the 100 grams of glucose that you put into your body with, the, uh, with that syrup that you took or the meal. Um, <clears throat> this is just another variation of the pattern getting even further. It has to go higher. You've got more insulin resistance as you go from here to here to here to here. And as you're going to here, it, it goes higher. You've got to put out a lot more insulin. You're getting up to the 160s, 180s, and it takes a lot longer. Not Again, you can't just do it with just the immediate insulin stores. You've got to make new insulin to get it to pull back down. Then, at the end of all of this, guess what? This kind of level wears out the pancreas and if you go there too long you can end up with just no insulin response um, <clears throat> people usually don't get go uh, get stay here so long that they go down there you, usually people are in more of this kind of range type 1 diabetics are more often the population that you'll see that demonstrate this and again Type 1 diabetes doesn't have anything to do, much to do with insulin resistance. What has happened with type 1 diabetes is that the, something has attacked the pancreas uh, directly, usually your own uh, immune system. That's what, what the belief is. So you never make insulin from the beginning. Now, <clears throat> so now we are, are a little bit clearer on the, all the different types of tests. Here's when you would use one versus the other. Uh, on, on everybody, we basically do um, fasting blood glucose, hemoglobin A1C, and um, oral glucose tolerance test to just get a baseline to see where they are. Um, if those three don't give us the information that we need, then we will. Uh, but we also have some... I saw a patient recently that it was a good example. He ended up having a... Um, a 90 for his fasting, which was good. Then he dropped to an 80 one hour later. But then he started going up. I believe he went over 100 at hour two. So we've got a very weird uh, glucose metabolism going on. And um, that's an, an example of when you would use the... Thank you for your attention.